Rebuttal to Bev and the Try Thinking on the Level Crew, round 3.2. Logic and Obfuscation with Saragaki. So last week I was on the uh, Try Thinking um, show uh, and I had mentioned that I had taken uh, Brian's logic uh, triangle that he had drawn across the United States and that I'd measured, measured the angles and they added up to more than 180 degrees. All right, because it's a spherical triangle. So I went on the Try Thinking uh, Discord server and I was just typing some stuff into, into text. So I had a, a little bit of an interchange with Saragaki. I was kidding around a little bit with him. Um, you know, he had he had written to somebody, if you don't have a plan, you become part of someone else's plan. And that's a very good that's a very good piece of advice. So I I was kidding around. I wrote <laughs> you were part of my plan. Um, and his response is, I'm very interested to see what mental realm you'll end up in reaching to surface after measuring a triangle with more than two right angles. So clearly he's talking about my claim about that uh, spherical triangle. So I um, responded back spherical triangle. You forgot that part. Uh, that's one thing is they, they, they don't like talking about spherical triangles. And he <laughs> responds, he thinks no one knows he's on video saying he measured a triangle, just triangle, with more than two right angles. Um, and, and I said, spherical triangle. You forgot that part again, right? And then he's like, he says, listen, the length of the straight line was of such magnitude that it went beyond logic and let me measure a triangle with more than two right angles. Again, he keeps calling it a triangle. Third time, I say spherical triangle, Saragaki. That's a tell. Your inability to call it by its name. All right. And so he responds back, uh, you should make a video where you make it clear by showing the perpendicular relationship between horizontal and vertical with no exceptions. Uh, I already did that. Uh, I start with vertical and anything perpendicular to plumb is horizontal with no exceptions. Um, but anyway, so he continues, uh, and also by showing a triangle with more than two right angles. Again, this is like, what, the fourth time he calls it a triangle? And so I said, spherical triangle. You're really having trouble here, Saragaki. Um, and then he responds with, you have to understand the law of identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle before we can have a conversation. You should start your study on logic while you have the time. All right, so let's take a look. Um, I looked up a couple of these things. Uh, law of identity. So basically, um, you know, it's talking about each thing having its own characteristics. An entity can have more than one characteristic, but any characteristic it has is a part of its identity. A car can be both blue and red, but not at the same time and not in the same respect. And I, I'm thinking what he's saying when he's when he's invoking the law of identity is he's thinking I'm just saying a triangle. So one aspect of a planar triangle is that the angles add up to 180. Well, one aspect of a spherical triangle is the angles add up to more than 180. So those are two different characteristics because they're two different triangles. And I think he's invoking this law because he's thinking that I'm talking about the same triangle. Uh, what else did he say? He mentioned law of identity, law of non-contradiction. Uh, so... Law of non-contradiction one is, is one of the basic laws in classical logic. It states that something cannot be both true and not true at the same time when dealing with the same context. So again, planar triangle, it is true that the angles have to add up to exactly 180. Um, and you can't say, well, then it's also false that the angles add up to 180. So in a spherical triangle, they add up to more than 180. So again, this is only a problem. This, this contradiction that he's talking about is only a problem if he's assuming that a spherical triangle is the same as a planar triangle and they're two different shapes. What's the other one he said? He said, talked about the excluded middle. And this is basically saying there's uh, there's no middle point between something being true and something being false. The law of excluded middle can be expressed by the propositional formula. Uh, and I think there's a symbol that's missing here. So something about P and not P. It means that a statement is either true or false. Think of it as claiming that there is no middle ground between being true and being false. All right. Um, I agree with that. Uh, but he's like, 
He says, I need to understand these three things before we can have a conversation. Well, I understand these things just fine. All right. It's it's him who has a really hard time just pronouncing the phrase or even typing out the phrase spherical triangle. And he tells me I need to study up on logic. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so I, I so I asked him a direct question. Do you believe it is a violation of the law of identity for there to be two different shapes, planar triangles and spherical triangles, because it really seems like you can't even acknowledge the existence of the latter. So that's just a direct question. I'm just asking what he believes, because he keeps invoking the law of identity every time I talk about spherical triangles. And uh, so how does he, how's he respond? Um, my belief is irrelevant. My belief cannot change the identity you're handling with caution when using proper logic. If you don't handle it correctly, you'll either you'll end in either fallacy in with which you'll have to agree, dialetheism in which you explode logic or aporia. Also, your mishandling of it is not my problem. All right, so let's take a look at uh, what do you say? Uh, dialetheism. Uh, <laughs> So I mean, these things are all, they all mean very similar things. The, the meanings of all these things, the terms are, are, are overlapping. So dialetheism is the, is the idea that some contradictions are true. Some true sentences have true negations. So basically P and not P are both true at the same time. Now, this is only a problem if, if he's thinking that planar triangles are the same as spherical triangles, and they are not. Uh, the other thing he said was um, aporia. So it's got a couple definitions, but in the logical sense, it's a radical contradiction. All right. Um, and so, again, th there's no there's no contradiction. A spherical triangle is not the same thing as a planar triangle. Uh, so that was quite a quite an answer. So and again, this was in response to my question. Do you believe it's a violation of the law of identity? for a spherical triangle to exist separate from a planar triangle. And so I respond, so a non-answer then. Uh, that's one difference between us. When you ask a straight question, I'm happy to answer. When I ask a straight question, I get deflection. That's another tell, by the way. All right. And, and then he says, you are not in a state where you can accept understanding clearly. My answer would disturb you and lead you further towards aporia. I'm only trying to stop that and turn you back to first principles. Once you have grasped the fundamentals of logic, we can proceed. If you choose aporia, just let me know and I can tell peas while you tell not peas and we'll have a jolly good time doing nothing. And again, what's uh, what's aporia? It's, it's a radical contradiction. So he's saying that I'm just going to accept a radical contradiction. Well, no, there's absolutely no contradiction on my end. So I respond, you are too funny. I ask you a straight question and you deflect. I point this out and you say, my answer would disturb you. Also known as deflection. It's a simple question, really. Scroll up to refresh your memory. Your answer will not disturb me, but it will tell me a lot about your position unless obfuscation is your goal. All right. Um, and, and then so I asked the question again. Saragaki, do you believe it is a violation of the law of identity for there to be two different shapes, planar triangles and spherical triangles? It's a simple question because I'm, I'm asking him his opinion. And uh, his response is, once you wake up to the understanding of the fundamental principles of logic, you can answer this question all on your own with only one possible conclusion. So again, I'm asking him his opinion and... <laughs> And that's what he said. So I said, another non-answer. So your goal is obfuscation. Uh, got it. Um, and then I, I responded uh, uh, again to him, um, uh, quoting him, you can answer this question all on your own, which is very funny uh, since I asked your opinion. It's a non-answer to say I need to study logic to learn your opinion, LOL. And uh, then I, re I, I wrote to him again. Um, okay, you're then welcome to stop referring to the law of identity every time I mention spherical triangles. That's what prompted my question. A simple question, which you should know cannot be a non sequitur because I'm not making a claim. 
I thought you were supposed to be an expert in logic. And then he responds, uh, my opinion is that you are absolutely clueless about logic if you think your question doesn't answer itself through basic principles of logic. Again, my question was his opinion. Uh, and he continues, the more you ask the question, the more you underscore my opinion that you're dumb, geometrically illiterate, illogical, and clueless di dialetheist, only here to proselytize for his monadic belief system. <laughs> and uh, and then he continues, I will because I will not deviate from fundamental principles of logic to go deep within the broken mind of Charles the Online LARPer. That stands for live action role playing. And so, I, so that was a lot. Uh, so I wrote word salad. Uh, no, thanks, because I already had lunch. You're quite skilled at obfuscation. I will give you that. But I think it's because you know your deck of cards doesn't sum to 52, lol. Um, and he responds back, uh, you just gave me a deck of cards with less than 52 cards, Charles. Uh, you're such a jester, but it's just not funny and not interesting and not entertaining. And uh, so I responded back, womp womp, this conversation is your own making because it is you who chooses obfuscation versus straight answers to simple questions. Word salads do get tiresome, yet you're complaining that you're tired. The lack of introspection is fascinating. Uh, so finally, I think, you know, it was, that was a good stopping point. So I said, you know, Saragaki, we'll chat some other time. See you later. Uh, but I, I think he was still um, writing his last comment. So he had responded to me. Your question is irrelevant to your answering yes to the question. Have you ever measured a triangle with more than 180 degrees? AKA the premise of this conversation is your original non sequitur as you refuse to go make a YouTube video <laughs> explaining how wrong you were to answer no in the situation you were placed in because you forgot to preface your answer with the qualifier you're now begging for. And I think what's, what he's alluding to is I was talking with Bev on Try Thinking and we were very specifically talking about spherical triangles. We were talking about azimuthal angles triangles at great distance uh, and i made the point over and over and over again that we we're talking about spherical triangles spherical excess and and then so he's acting like you know he didn't know i was talking about a spherical triangle so that'll be in another video um so what it did is i i prepared a a, a couple slides um so uh saragaki i've got a couple logic challenges i wrote just for you um, other folks can have at them since Saragaki won't comment on this video. So you won't be spoiling anything by putting stuff in the comments, but let's, let's take a look at these. So first let's take a look at logic circuits. Uh, I first started using logic circuits, um, the integrated circuits, uh, in, in a breadboard. Uh, this is the, uh, the 7408 quad and, um, and I first started using them in, I guess, 1986. And it was, uh, it was pretty fascinating how you can just, you know, plug these things together and, and, and perform logic. Now, if you could break down into the simpler steps, you can actually do this manually with a couple transistors. So here's the uh, circuit diagram of the OR gate. Um, so here's, a, here's an actual picture of the breadboard with two circuits. One of these is an OR and one of them is an AND. So question number one is which circuit is an OR gate? And question number two is what happens if both of the A buttons are pushed? Which LEDs, if any, will light up? So um, if you actually look very carefully at the breadboard, uh, you could figure this out, but you do have to know a little bit about logic. All right, how about Boolean logic? So I got my start in uh, computing uh, on a uh, tele, I don't know, they, they didn't call it a teletype machine, but basically it was a, it was a remote terminal that uh, tapped into a, um, a mainframe at General Electric in Philadelphia and had little suction cups for the for the phone. And uh, I think it was called the Silent 700 because it had like this thermal this thermal dot matrix uh, printer. And we had uh, great fun on that. And then later on, I, I, I worked on personal computers and uh, learned a bunch of languages. Um, and right now I'm working on a little Python. So I, I wrote this uh, little bit of code uh, for Saragaki. And so when you execute this code, what is the output? Okay, so that's question number three. What is the output when this code is run? 
All right, how about some symbolic logic? So he's constantly going on about P and not P. Um, so here's a truth table. I've got uh, a couple um, quantities, uh, P, Q, and R. Now, the actual truth table would be eight, eight rows tall, so I'm only showing four rows just to make this thing meaningful. And then we've got this uh, symbolic logic statement. So uh, fill in the truth table with, it would just be the letter T or F in questions four, five, six, and seven. That should be a little bit of fun. Uh, and those symbols, they the symbols just mean um, or and not, and then uh, we've got uh, conditionals and biconditionals. So that's all those symbols are, plus grouping symbols like parentheses. Um, and then now we have uh, formal logic. So I've got a couple statements which I think you'll be very familiar with. Um, identifying these statements as P, Q, R, and S. And so question number eight is uh, true or false. So perform uh, formal logic and, and see if you can come up with a, a uh, conclusion for what that is stating in the pink. All right. So again, <laughs> Sarakaki, he closed with, uh, you know, and I said, we'll chat some other time. See you later. He, he responded with, I hope you learned some logic by then. Yes, uh, maybe I need to. Maybe I need to learn some logic, Saragaki. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the recommendation. I do want to say thanks to my channel members. I really appreciate the the support. And as always, uh, folks, be kind in the comments. All right, bye bye.